Assalamu alaikum viewers, this is Dr. Shahid Zia and today we have with us Mr. Grant from Australia who's working in, in Pakistan, particularly right now in the Balochistan area and Quetta in particularly. Welcome to Pakistan. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, what exactly are you doing here in Quetta? Well, what I'm doing in Quetta is we have a series of communities and we're trying to advance their marketing skills. We use value chains which allows us to try and indicate where we can work best. I'll just pick an example. A value chain has three areas, production, marketing, and the bit in the middle. So from our value chain analysis with wool, we know we have to improve the sheep, and we know we have to improve the productivity of the land. Using the same concept of value chains, we know that, for example, in sheep, we've got to get better shearing. Uh, change it. The other end is marketing. Let, let's take flowers, for example. We're working with flowers. We're selling cut flowers at the moment. The bigger money is in floral arrangements. You put your flower in, you fluff it out with all greenery, green's cheap, flowers expensive, you can boost up your price. The other thing is, the biggest business in Quetta is the army. No one approaches the army to sell them flowers. They always go through just the wholesale market. There's the whole food service sector. So that's how we're using value chain. Indicate where can we take action and what's the best action to do. I totally agree. There is a great deal of business and money in florists uh, doing all this stuff. And um, um, did you get to know that we had uh, tulips planted here in Lahore the, uh, this season? I know about the tulips because my people up in uh, Baluchistan have told me. One of the things we're looking at within florists is indigenous varieties. And if we can do something with indigenous varieties, we've been finding, I work in the South Pacific, and we're having great success with indigenous varieties. Yes, there's your carnation, your roses, and all that stuff, but indigenous varieties. And don't forget, in Quetta, we have direct flights to Dubai, and that's where the big bucks are. So get our stuff on the local market right, maybe expand out of Baluchistan, but then aim for the big market down in Quetta, uh, down in Dubai. Uh, Grant, can we do this uh, flower business in, uh, in Baluchistan? Baluchistan has many disadvantages. One overwhelming advantage it's got is its climate. It's hot and dry. Insects don't like it, diseases don't like it. As long as you've got irrigation, hot and dry, it is close to perfect weather for growing flowers. Yes, sir, we can do it. And are we doing that at present there? We're just starting. It's a very small industry. It's just starting. But the fact that nearly every night we have these truckloads coming up from Karachi indicates the market's there. We've just never grown it locally. So there's a great hope for people other than the, the, the routine work they're doing. So they get into flower business, plant flowers, sell it to Karachi, export it to Dubai. The, the big thing with flowers is it tends to be low capital. It's very intensive in some areas, but we can do it in, in, in the village community, particularly within the householders by the women. And it, we're not talking of acres and acres and acres, we're talking of square metres rather than hundreds and hundreds of acres. And that's another big plus for it. It, it allows normally the women who are kept at home in a very confined area to actually use some spare time and some of their spare land. Which are the best indigenous flowers that have you found to be wonderful? Not yet. Come, interview me in six weeks' time. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have something turned around in six weeks' time or around. We have to try and identify it. But I could talk about wool in the same regards. I could talk about apples. Wool is a wonderful example. We've got more sheep than people. What do Australia and Baluchistan have in common? Um, more sheep, sheep than people. True. And so we're trying to work on the sheep. So how are they doing the shearing here in Baluchistan and how is it different from the shearing being done in Australia? Your sheep... In Christian terms, there's a man called Noah who had an ark. Your technology came off the ark. Wow. When I came back from Australia last year, I bought a simple mechanical shear that runs off the car battery, of a 12-volt car battery. This is not high technology. It's appropriate technology. We can now shear a sheep in about four minutes compared to over 20 minutes with the old clip, clip, clip thing. The animal doesn't get cut with a good shearer. So we've markedly, massively improved the quality of, of the shearing productivity. So are they still using the same shears that we're using to cut down our hedges? Shh, 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 shh. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but we're trying to get mechanical shearing in. We're trying to improve the technique of shearing. That's one part of the value chain. We have to come back and do something with the rangeland rehabilitation because that's where the sheep come from. My interest is wool, but I need the sheep to give me the wool. So we've got to look after the sheep, then we get the wool, then we're trying to do some marketing. We do simple grading. I'll give you an example. When we were shearing the sheep, if you wash it beforehand and let the sheep dry, shear him, 
take out the belly wool, which is the low class wool, grade for black, yellow and white, some of our communities have had an increase of 80%, not 8, 80% of their income who follow these simple rules. So we're now trying to advance it using baling equipment, so we store it, so we do co-location, we say co-transporting with something like apples, and then we're trying to develop a mark, a, uh, a logo, one of these things, so that our wool meets these standards, means we can then sell on a sample basis rather than selling it to Multan, Karachi, and hoping that we get a good price. Grant, pleasure meeting you and talking to you. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.